Eight four lengths of curves. Let's take a sine wave. How long is a sine wave? The usual meaning of wavelength refers to the fundamental period, which for y equals sine of x is two pi. But how long is the curve itself? If you straighten it out like a piece of string along the positive x-axis with one end at zero, where would the other end be? In other words, if you started here and walked along the sine wave, the wavelength is from crest to crest, but that's just kind of a linear distance. Uh, we're asked, how far would you walk if you walked, let's say, one complete wave, or even just this one little section? Well, imagine drawing a secant line through the curve and then finding the length of that secant line. We could use, we could set up a right triangle and use the Pythagorean theorem. And this is going to be a little shorter than the actual length, but what if we made the hypotenuse a little shorter and a little shorter and then just added up a whole bunch of tiny ones. So we're going to take each hypotenuse till it's infinitely small and then take an infinite amount of those and that's going to be the exact length of the curve. Well, we're going to add up all of those, so we use summation. We're going to add up all of the hypotenuses. So we have delta x squared sub k, so in other words, the change in x, plus the change in y sub k squared. So we're going to add up an infinite amount of these. Let's uh, do a little algebra. We can multiply the top and the bottom by delta sub k, so change in x sub k. So we're just working a little algebra here. And then we could take the square root of the bottom squared. In other words, let, let me write this here. We have x sub k squared plus y sub k squared. And we could write that over the square root of delta x sub k squared. And then have delta x sub k. So we're squaring a square root that goes right back to the x. And then we can put this under one radical and have x squared over x squared. That is 1. And then the change in y squared over the change in x squared, that's really uh, that's the derivative squared. So that's, uh, that's really dy dx squared. In other, in other, in other words, the derivative squared. Then if you have summation, this is really the integral of the square root of 1 plus f prime of x squared, the derivative squared, times dx. So the formula we're looking for is the, 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 arc, the, the length of the curve is the square root of 1 plus the derivative squared. And it's the integral of that. Let's use a calculator to find what is the length of the curve y equals sine of x from 0 to 2 pi. Well, on our calculator, we're going to find the integral from 0 to 2 pi of the square root of 1 plus. Now, if we're going to find the length of this curve right here, we have to square the derivative. We have cosine squared of x and then dx. So we go to math, number 9, and we're putting in the square root of 1 plus, we need cosine squared. So cosine x squared. And we are integrating on x, and we are going from 0 to 2 pi. Example 2, applying the definition. Find the exact length of the curve. We have this curve for 0 to 1. Let's find the derivative. The derivative is equal to 4 squared of 2 over 3 times 3 halves, and then x to the 1 half. The, the derivative of negative 1 is 0. That's equal to, well, the 3's cancel out. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 squared of 2, and then x to the 1 half. We have to square this in the formula, so let's do that now. We have 4 times 2x, which is 8x. Now we're finding the integral from 0 to 1 of the square root of 1 plus 8x dx. The formula is the square root of 1 plus the derivative squared, and this right here represents the derivative squared. Let's let u equal 1 plus 8x. 
du is equal to 8 dx. Then we have 1 eighth du is equal to dx. We have 1 eighth square root of u du. We have u to the 1 half, and we're going to add 1 to that, which is 3 halves. We have 1 eighth u to the 3 halves, but then times 2 thirds. We have 1 eighth times 2 thirds, and then if we plug u back in, that's 1 plus 8x to the 3 halves, and we're evaluating this from 0 to 1. We have 1 eighth times 2 thirds times I plug a 1 in here, I get 8 plus 1 is 9. The square root of 9 is 3, and 3 to the third is 27. We have 27. And then minus 2 thirds times, if I plug a 0 in here, I just get 1. We have 1 eighth times, well if I take 27 of these and minus 1 of them, I get 2 thirds times 26 of these which is equal to, let's see, I can take a 2 out, and I get uh, 13, 2 times 13 over 4 times 3, and that's 13 over 6. Example 3, a vertical tangent. Find the length of the curve y equals x to the 1 third between negative 8, negative 2, and 8, 2. Let's take the derivative. We have y prime is equal to 1 third x to the negative two-thirds, and we are going to integrate from negative eight to eight of the square root of one plus this thing squared. Let's square this. We have one-ninth x to the negative four-thirds dx. Let's use our calculator to find this. We have math number nine, and we have the square root of one plus one-ninth x raised to the negative four-thirds. Comma x, comma negative eight to eight. And we have a domain error. There's a problem with this. There's a problem with this when we have y equals x to the one-third. Let's graph this. First of all, we're going to have to quit this and we have y equals, and it's x raised to the one-third. And uh, we're going to change the window here a little bit. Let's go from, on the y's, let's just go from negative three to three. The problem we have is from negative eight to eight, there's a vertical tangent line at zero. Also notice that this is going to put the x in the denominator. And when that happens, when you have a vertical tangent, that's going to give you a problem. And for at least this calculator, it's going to give us an error. So rather than doing this on x, let's try to do this on y. So in other words, we're going to go from negative 2 to 2 and get this to say x equals. If we raise both sides to the third power, we get x equals y to the third x prime is 3y squared, and then if we square that, we get 9y to the fourth. So let's integrate from negative 2 to 2 of the square root of 1 plus 9y to the fourth dy, and this is going to give us the answer that we're looking for. Let's get out of here. Math number 9, we have the square root of 1 plus 9 I know it says x, but we're really doing this with y now. We are integrating on x, and we're going from negative 2 to 2 this time. The answer we're looking for is 17.261. Example 4, getting around a corner. Find the length of the curve y equals x squared minus 4 absolute value of x minus x from x equals negative 4 to x equals 4. Let's look at the definition of absolute value. 
it's equal to x when x is greater than or equal to 0, and negative x when x is less than 0. In other words, if you put a 2 in, you get a 2 out. If you put a negative 2 in, you take the opposite of that negative 2, which is positive 2. Well, now we can write this function without absolute value. We have x squared uh, minus 4x minus x when x is greater than or equal to 0. In other words, when x is greater than or equal to 0, this is just a positive x. It's just x. Then, when x is less than 0, this becomes negative 4, negative x. We have x squared plus 4x minus x when x is less than 0. And of course, we can do a little bit of simplifying here. We have x squared minus 5x and x squared plus 3x. When x is greater than or equal to 0, when x is less than 0. Now we can split this up into two integrals. We can do the integral from negative 4 to 0 of the square root of 1 plus 2x plus 3 squared. We need to take the derivative when x is less than 0 because we're on the negative side. dx and then plus 0 to 4 of the square root of 1 plus. Now we need the positive side. The derivative squared here is going to be 2x minus 5 squared dx. And then we'll do the rest just on our calculator. Let's go math number 9. And we have the square root of 1 plus, parentheses, 2x, and that's times, 2x plus 3 squared, comma x, comma negative 4 to 0. And we can get that answer. And then we're going to add that to math number 9. And we have the square root of 1 plus 2x minus 5 squared on x. And now we're going from 0 to 4. And the answer is 19.556.